Buenas tardes. In the previous video, we saw how to save and load data between MATLAB and text files. Here, we'll explore a few more functions that are more efficient when sharing data with Microsoft Excel. This is important because Excel is such a commonly used software by engineers, scientists, and pretty much every professional. First, we'll discuss two functions for sending data from MATLAB to Excel. Later, we'll move data in the other direction. Now, the .txt files created with the save command in the previous video can be opened with Excel, but this requires a small bit of extra processing. More convenient are CSV write and XLS write. I recommend XLS write if you know the data will be used by Excel only, but CSV write is usually better if the file might be used by Excel and or some other program. CSV stands for comma separated variable, and it is easy for programs to distinguish when we jump to a new column by looking for the commas. Let's see the slide example in MATLAB. First, I create a sample 6x6 matrix. Using the most basic syntax for CSV write, I pass in the file name and then the variable I want to write to that file. After entering the command, this new file appears in my current folder. If I wanted to pad the table being written with extra rows or columns, I can do that using the syntax shown here. In this example, three empty rows and one empty column will start the data set. Now let's look at these files open in Notepad. Notice how all the numbers are separated by commas. Also, notice the extra spaces in the second example. The results are even clearer when opened in Excel. These CSV files can be opened without any special importing steps besides the standard method of opening files. Here, the magic square numbers appear nicely organized in rows and columns. Also, the starting gaps from the second example are immediately clear. Now let's turn our attention to the XLS write function. On this slide, first the data set is created. This one happens to show the volume of a cylinder for a variety of heights and radii. Note the concatenation at the end to combine all three columns into a single table or matrix. Then, three separate uses of XLS write are employed. The first use is the most basic syntax. Again, we pass in just the file name and the variable holding the data. This will use the default settings of writing into the first Excel sheet, beginning in the top left cell. In the next use, two new input arguments are introduced. The first, Sheet 2, tells MATLAB to create a new worksheet within the Excel workbook on which to write the data. The second, B5, causes the top left corner of the table to be written into cell B5 rather than the default top left cell A1. Having already entered these commands into MATLAB, let's look at the results in Excel. In both cases, we see the same table of data. In the first, it is in the default sheet 1, starting in cell A1. In the second, the new worksheet is added. Within it, the table begins in cell B5. But the data is hard to interpret. With no units or column headers explaining what each column means, that data is useless. Let's see how to write those from MATLAB. In this bottom example, I first create the column headers stored as text within a cell array. Then I use XLS write twice. First, I write in the column headers and I specify which sheet and starting cell. That way, when I write in the data, I can line it up with the column headers. Notice here how I place the data one row below by specifying A2. The results in Excel are lovely. Data and description perfectly aligned. What about moving data the other direction, from Excel files into MATLAB? There are a few options. The first is to click the Import Data button in MATLAB and manually select options. The second is to use the XLS Read function, and there are a number of other functions that may work for you depending on the application. Since all of these options are potentially time intensive, once you get the data into MATLAB's workspace, you may want to save that data into a .mat file. As discussed in the previous video, 
this is the most convenient data file type for working exclusively in MATLAB. Let's look at an example of manually importing data. Here we see the data in Excel that I want to import in a file named cubesizes.xlsx. The actual content doesn't matter for this discussion, but we can see there are four columns of data and two rows of column headers. Now in MATLAB, on the Home tab, I select Import Data. I choose the file and click Open. The Import dialog box opens up, which gives me many options. First, I can change which cells will be imported by dragging this highlighted box. I can choose the output format, a numeric matrix, a set of column vectors, a cell array, and so on. I'll choose column vectors here. If importing field data, there may be instances where the data is corrupted or reading strange values. I can use this section to change those values into a specific number or a NAN, which stands for not a number. When ready, I click the green check mark. Now, in the workspace, I can see those columns of data that have been imported. To import data using code, one useful function is xlsread. The first example shown here demonstrates a basic syntax. Here, the first input argument specifies the file name. The second input argument specifies the name of the sheet within Excel. Thankfully, MATLAB automatically ignores the column headers and only imports the numbers. The output argument indicates the name of the variable to save under. Down below, we see one example of tighter control over what is imported. There are many other options available. Here, I indicate the range of Excel cells that I want imported, starting from the top left cell and extending to the bottom right cell. No matter how you do it, being able to exchange data between different programs is a vital skill, and Excel is one of the most common programs for storing and organizing data.